In this video, we're going to talk about arene diazonium salts, the Sanmai reactions, and diazo cuplin. So let's get into the material. First, let's talk about how we could synthesize an arene diazonium salt. So let's start with benzene. Now the first step is aromatic nitration. So we need to install an NO2 group to the ring. So once we have nitrobenzene, our next step is to reduce it. So we could use a metal and hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to use iron metal. And we're going to reduce the NO2 group into an NH2 group. And then the final step is to react this with sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid. So combined, these two, nitrite and the hydrogen, they make nitrous acid. Sometimes you might see this like this, H-O-N-O. -O. The result is the same. This reaction is carried out at low temperatures. The result is an arene diazonium salt, which looks like this. So we have a triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms, and this nitrogen has a positive charge, and it's going to pair up with the chloride ion. So that's the arene diazonium salt. So we could take this reactant, the arene diazonium salt, and use it in a bunch of other reactions. So I'm going to go over the Sanmai reactions. Now, if we react the arene diazonium salt with a copper 1 salt, it's known as the Sanmai reaction. So let's say if we react it with copper 1 chloride, we're going to replace the N2 group with a chlorine atom. And so we're going to get uh, this product. And the leaving group, what we have is a very good leaving group, which is nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is very stable. And so we have a triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms and a lone pair on each side. So this molecule is very stable. And the formation of a gas drives the reaction forward. Now, there are some other Sanmai reactions that you need to be aware of. For instance, if we react with copper bromide, we can replace the N2 group with a bromine atom instead of a chlorine atom. And so this is going to give us bromobenzene. Now, we can also react it with copper cyanide. And so we're going to get a CN group. In addition, we can react this with copper 1 iodide. And so we can replace the N2 group with iodine, giving us this product. You could also use potassium iodide as well, because that will also give you this product. So just keep that in mind. Now, there's some other things that we can do with this reactant. For instance, if we react it with HBF4, we can replace the N2 group with a fluorine atom. And so we can get fluorobenzene. Now there's some other stuff that we can do. Let's say if we react with H3O plus and heat, we could turn the arene diazonium salt into phenol. So that's another product that we can get. Or we could react it with H3PO2, which is hypophosphorus acid. And we could replace the N2 group with a hydrogen atom. So basically, we can go back to benzene. And so there's a lot that we can do here. By the way, you can also make phenol using copper oxide with copper 2 nitrate and water. 
So that's another way in which you can make phenol from the aryl diazonium salt. Now let's work on some problems. Let's say if we have nitrobenzene. How can we convert nitrobenzene into benzene? So basically, how can we remove the nitro group from a benzene ring? What reagents do we need in order to make this happen? So the first thing I would do is reduce the NO2 group to an NH2 group. So we need a metal. It could be zinc, iron, or tin with hydrochloric acid. And so this will give us aniline. And so once we have aniline, we could then react it with sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid at a low temperature. And that's going to give us the aryl diazonium salt. Now, once we have this aryl diazonium salt, our next step is to use H3PO2. And so we're going to replace it with a hydrogen atom. And so that's how we can remove an NO2 group and turn it back into benzene. So here is another synthesis problem for you. So starting with benzene, how can we make this product? And this is going to be 135-tribromobenzene. How can we synthesize this compound? What reagents do we need? So feel free to pause the video and use the reactions that you know to see if you can come up with a way to synthesize it. Now you might be thinking of using bromine with iron bromide. Now let's see what's going to happen if we do that. So if we react the benzene ring with Br2 and FeBr3, the first thing that's going to happen is the first bromine is just going to go on a ring, so we could put that anywhere. Now, we need to put a total of three bromine atoms on a ring. And so this implies that we need to react it again with bromine and iron 3 bromide. Now, the bromine atom is an ortho pair director, so it can direct the second bromine atom to go to the ortho position or to the pair position. And looking at these two products that we're going to get in the next step, none of these two products will lead to the product that we want. Because in order to get 135-tribromobenzene, all of the bromine atoms are meta with respect to each other. Here, these two are ortho with respect to each other, and these two are para. And so this process will not give us 135-tribromobenzene. So we need to come up with another method. So what do you think we need to do? What steps do we need to take in order to make the product that we want? The first step is nitration. So we need to put an NO2 group on a ring. Now once we have the NO2 group, once we have nitrobenzene, we need to reduce it. So this time, I'm going to use a different metal, tin metal and hydrochloric acid. And so that's going to give me aniline, which I'm going to put it here. So once we have aniline, what's our next step? Now aniline is a very strong activating group. It's also an ortho para directing group. So now we need to react it with bromine and iron tribromide. So where will the bromine atoms go once we have aniline? Now aniline could direct the bromine atom in the ortho position or in a para position. So let's put the first bromine atom in the para position. Now once we react this again with bromine, where's the second bromine atom going to go? The NH2 group wants to direct it in the ortho position. Bromine is also an ortho para director, so bromine wants it to go here. Now this is a weak deactivating group. 
However, the NH2 group is a strong deactiv I mean a strong activating group. So because this is strongly activated, it's going to win over the bromine atom. So it's going to tell where the second bromine atom to go. So it's going to direct the second bromine atom to go here. And then if we add three equivalents of Br2, the NH2 will now tell the third bromine atom to go ortho with respect to it. These two, they're still both weakly deactivated. So we don't have to take them into account. So the third bromine atom will go here. And now we have the three bromine atoms in the right position. They're all meta with respect to each other. Now what's our next step? So now all we need to do is get rid of the NH2 group. So first, we need to convert it to the arine diazonium salt. So let's use sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid to do that. Now once we have the arine diazonium salt, what is our next step? How can we get rid of the N2 group? The next step is to replace it with a hydrogen atom. And so we need to use hypophosphorus acid, H3PO2. And since we don't have to show the hydrogen atom, our final product will look like this. We're going to get 1,3,5-tribromobenzene. And so that's how we could synthesize it using the arine diazonium salt. And so as you can see, those reactions are very useful to put bromine atoms in uh, meta positions. And you could do other reactions like that as well. So it's a good way of making certain compounds. Now let's talk about diazo couplin reactions. So let's say if we have phenol and we're going to react it with the arine diazonium salt. And basically we're going to connect these two molecules together. Now phenol has a strong activating group and so the phenol ring is nucleophilic whereas the arine diazonium salt it's a weak electrophile. So we know that nucleophiles like to attack electrophiles. And so what's going to happen is that we're going to use the paracarbon as the nucleophilic carbon. It's going to attack this nitrogen, causing the triple bond to break, turn it into a double bond, pushing a lone pair on the second nitrogen. And so we can basically connect these two things together. So this is called an azo linkage. So now we have one lone pair on each nitrogen atom. And we have a positive charge on this carbon. And we still have this hydrogen, which we need to remove. Now, in the next step, we need to use a base to take away the hydrogen and use the electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond to reform the aromatic ring. And so this will give us an azo compound, which I'm going to draw in the next page. Now, one thing I want to mention is that the nucleophile has to be strongly activated. So you need a strong activating group, such as an OH group or an NH2 group to work, because this is a weak electrophile. So the product of this reaction, we can draw it like this. So we have a double bond between the two nitrogen atoms. And instead of drawing the two benzene rings in a linear geometry, what we really have is cis and trans. So the two benzene rings could be trans with respect to each other. And this is going to be the more stable situation due to the fact that it has less steric strain. And on one of these, we have the OH group. So I'm going to put the OH group on this side. Well, actually, it has to be on a paracarbon, so 
the OH should be on that carbon. Now we can also get the cis isomer, which looks like this. The cis isomer is less stable because of steric factors. And here is the OH group. So we can get a mixture of products. We can get the trans isomer and we can get the cis isomer. Now let's talk about another way in which we could show the mechanism for this reaction. The first method was a very simple and straightforward method, which is completely fine, but it doesn't show how the OH group affects the ring and how it affects this whole reaction. Now, as we said before, the Aryan diazonium salt is a weak electrophile. This whole thing has a positive charge. As you can see, it's on a nitrogen, so it's, you can represent it as E+. Plus. And the net result of this reaction is that we're going to replace it with a hydrogen. So the hydrogen will come off as H+. Plus. It's being displaced by E+. Plus. And so when these two get together, the side product will be HCl. So basically, we're like transferring one ion for another. Now the OH group is going to use its lone pair to form a double bond. And then this double bond will move here, causing this double bond to attack the nitrogen from the paracarbon. And then this triple bond will go to a double bond. Those pi electrons will be converted to a lone pair on that nitrogen. So now we have an oxygen with a positive charge and a lone pair on it. We have a double bond in those regions. And now we have an attachment to this to these two nitrogen atoms. And they both carry a lone pair. So now the second nitrogen atom no longer has a positive charge on it. We still need to remove this proton. So we're going to use a base to do so. And then we're going to make a double bond here, causing this double bond to move, pushing those electrons back to the oxygen atom. And so we're going to get our azo compound, which we can draw this way, or we can draw the cis and the trans isomer. And so that's another way in which we could show the mechanism for the formation of this azo compound. And it shows the effect that the strongly activating group has in this process. It makes the ring more nucleophilic and more likely to attack the aryan diazonium salt.